Coming up next is um, Cinema, the Local and the Future, which is um, a panel that I'm chairing. Uh, essentially, uh, this is about um, what role cinema has to developing localities and communities uh, in the post-COVID world, I suppose. There are billions and billions of words. Uh, words have been spent over the last uh, nine months about what the future is going to look like. Um, but whatever is going to happen, it's certain that community and locality is going to be part of the thing that digs us out. Um, we are uh, a community, as is shown by the attendance today at This Way Up, but the wider community out there, what they can do to solve and to bring solutions and to um, assist in a kind of um, a rebuilding of a slightly better kind of society uh, than we've had in the past. And uh, what we're going to discuss today is what cinema's, cinema's role could be in that. Um, cinemas is venues for, where, where folk gather together, where they can play a part in, in how their community works and how it develops. Um, and that's from all different levels of of cinema as well, uh, not just um, the traditional uh, film society community, but where all cinemas can fit within this rebuilding process. So um, I'm delighted uh, that we're going to be joined by three uh, different speakers today. Um, we have Gally Gold, uh, who is the head of cinema at Barbican Centre. We have Will Nafori, who is one of the uh, producers on uh, Leighton Stone Loves Film, uh, which they're going to be talking about today. And also, I'm delighted to say from the Kingdom of Down, um, uh, sorry, the Kingdom of Mourn in God's Own County of County Down, uh, Rob Manley from Newcastle Community Cinema. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that's not Newcastle upon Tyne, that's Newcastle upon Shimna. And so they will be uh, joining me um, any second, I would imagine. Um, and there, indeed, there they are. Hello, the magic of cinema. Um, oh, hello, Rob. Hello, Gally. And hello. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. How are you all? Well, well, good, yeah. Nervous, but good. <laughs> yeah. Well, don't be nervous. Uh, don't be nervous at all. You've all got very different backgrounds. Um, uh, Gally's got books, uh, Wilma's got maps, and you've got a pub, Rob, which is uh, which is good to see. Yeah. <laughs> Only place I can get a de decent internet connection. <laughs> maybe that's, the, maybe that's the, the, the future of pubs, where people come to use the in internet. Well, um, thank you all very much uh, for joining us today um, to sort of um, discuss this idea of the uh, cinema and the local and what the possibilities are. Um, uh, maybe it might be good just to kind of um, uh, give a quick rundown, uh, let me see, of uh, what we're going to talk about today. So we're going to talk about Beyond Barbican, is the project uh, that Wilna and Galley are going to be talking about. Um, and then we're going to be talking to Rob about Newcastle Community Cinema. And then at the end of that, we're going to come together and sort of discuss some of the wider issues um, that arise from their work. So um, without further ado, um, Galley, Wilna, tell us about um, Beyond Barbican. How did it start? Um, you know, um, tell us the, the nuts and bolts of how it worked. Okay, so <laughs> I'm I'm going to start um, yeah. and kind of give a bit of an overview of Leighton Stone Loves Film, which is actually the project within yeah. kind of the Beyond Barbican department, which is the department I work in, um, whereas Galley works in cinema for the Barbican. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm going to give a bit of a, a background to the project where we are right now and just a little bit of detail about the two kind of celebrations we've had within the project over the last couple of years. Mm. Um, and then we can go from there. Then Gally's going to talk a little bit about how we work together and how cinema, Barbican Cinema works with partners. So um, Leighton Stoner's film is the project that I help uh, develop and deliver. Now we're in, we've just actually finished our second kind of iteration of it. It is, it's a film related festival. It's not a traditional film festival. It's a it's a celebration of film in Leytonstone, which is a small um, area within the larger borough of Waltham Forest, which is in London. Mm -hmm. um, so it's very much inspired by the kind of cinematic heritage of Leytonstone, which is the birthplace of uh, Alfred Hitchcock. It's yeah. also very close to an area in Waltham Forest um, where some of the very first cinema studios were um, in the world, were predating Hollywood. Um, and also, Leighton Stone itself has a very long high road. And on that high road in the early 20th century, there were, I think there were over 20 cinemas at one point. Right. And so now there are none. <laughs> so it has a very kind of rich cinematic history that it has been 
has recently kind of we're trying to contribute to bringing it to light and to kind of um, add to that, I suppose, that heritage with um, some of the amazing uh, cinema clubs and filmmakers and enthusiasts that are still operating, but like within their own kind of pocket. So the kind of project behind Leighton Stoneless Film is to bring people together to kind of create um, net a network of people who love cinema, who, who make movies, who um, just want to share their work mm -hmm. um, and quite focused in Leytonstone, but then also being very open to the surrounding borough and, you know, open to London and the world. So um, the, the project itself is quite an interesting one because it is was commissioned by the council, um, Wealth and Forest Borough, London Borough Wolf Forest um, in 2019 as part of their larger cultural offer as um, part of the London Borough of Culture 2019. Mm -hmm. um, and it's made by a kind of a growing collective of filmmakers, film organizations and local partners. And then the Barbican is kind of the facilitating producer. Um, so we've got funding from the council, funding from the Barbican via um, our ACE National Portfolio Organization grant. Um, and then anything else we can kind of scrabble together. Um, and so, you know, it's, it's a free event for the, for the community and anyone else who's interested, obviously. Um, and it last year, it was over three days, but this year we've actually, we actually spread out the program over three weeks. So it's still kind of quite a, um, responsive event that um, has cha has changed each year it's existed. Um, so yes, yeah, so some of the partners we've worked with um, over the last two years um, include amazing uh, uh, programmers and organizations like E17 Films, Women Over 50 Film Festival. Hi, Nula, if you're listening. Um, we are parable. <laughs> Um, Stowe Film Lounge, who've been, you know, uh, working in the borough for years, making films, um, exhibiting films, um, and some new kind of film clubs that have come up and have now been going for a couple of years, Atmos Cinema Club, that um, kind of re, re is re-energizing um, South Asian film clubs of the 70s that were really active yes. um, in the area, um, and Forest Film Club, which is like a short film appreciation club. So I'm going to go a bit uh, faster through all my information. Apologies. Okay. One qu quick question, Will, yeah. just, uh, just before you get into that, was was there much sort of um, uh, preliminary work on the ground before the council sort of offered the money and, and engaged? Um, very much. So a little bit of background. So the Barbican and my team, Beyond Barbican, has worked with the council for about seven years now. Yeah. So. The initial kind of project we work with them is called the Walthamstow Garden Party, which is a greenfield festival um, that has been running for about six years. Well, this would have been the seventh, I think, um, yeah, um, attracting about 35,000 people over a weekend. So proper big music festival, but also very much developed and delivered with a collective of partners. Yeah. So that was kind of the background of our work in the area which is why we were commissioned to produce Leighton Stoneless film. But mm. for that project, we, we started really in 28, before actually Gally, I realized um, we did some film related work in 2017 and then focused our, um, we did one kind of a uh, few pop-up events in 2018 to kind of get to know everybody as a start. And then I did a lot of like getting mm. to know people over 2018 into 2019. So it's mm. very, you know, it's it's really like a four or five year project now right. that has had two kind of bigger public celebrations. Okay. Um, so yeah, so it's it's this kind of long, slow development yeah. into the future, like and a and a growing relationships with different people um, mm. over that period. A um, couple more things just to say is that the way that we work is that um, every every partner that is in, involved in the project has a, um, a project fee that includes their their fee for the w yeah. work that they do, mostly programming and um, some, sometimes filmmaking, workshop delivery, and also their kind of their brain time. Mm -hmm. um, 
but we but we pro- provide kind of the delivery budget so we do we provide the venues the furniture um, film hire all right. of the kind of delivery aspect so the fee that they get doesn't need to cover any of that stuff so we kind mm. of provide the shell of the film festival as suppose um so i've got some stats about the two 2019 yeah. and stats 2020 people like that slide <laughs> okay so 2019 was kind of our start year it was because it was part of a, a broader massive cultural kind of year of festivities for the borough it it was also kind of um had a bit of a street fest um uh, aspect of it so if you can imagine a film festival plus a street fest smashed together which was interesting mm-hmm. uh, it was also one of the wettest weekends after a really nice summer so that was fun but um so we had uh, we started on the friday night continued until sunday over that period we had about eight thousand people watching a film this is a pre-covid photo from that event right, um yeah. everyone sitting nice and close to each other um happy times yeah, yeah happy times <laughs> uh we had films being shown like in very unusual places so that is an amazing um hall in the local library which is just mm-hmm. the most beautiful little venue but we were also was also in a car park church hall an ex servicemen's club and two pubs so we very much kind of created these screening venues in different spaces across uh, a, a one little small bit of the very large Leightonstone High Road. Um, and the program was incredibly varied because our partners are, are so varied in their interests. So we had everything from a classic Bollywood film, Piazza, all the way to Bugsy Malone and some John Smith experimental work from 80s, 70s. Um, so very eclectic, varied program. Um, oh, like over 70% of the of the audience were from Waltham Forest, which is great, you know, it's a local audience. Um, we had 66 screenings and workshops over the festival, which is, I read that now and I think it's completely insane. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that time, we showed 130 films, both short and, th- and feature length. Um, and of that, 93, so the bulk was programmed by the partners right. and 37 was actually programmed by um, Barbican Cinema, which Gally will talk about in a, a minute. <laughs> so I can get through my, my spiels. Okay. Um, and then this year, obviously, we had to really adapt. We were planning on having a much more venue based, um, expanded program in October, but obviously, those plans were thrown out. And but we were lucky enough to be able to actually deliver some COVID safe live outdoor screenings which is, as you can see, everyone's very far apart in that photo. Yeah. Um, but so that was actually the screening of Bronco Bullfrog, which is classic 1960s film that was filmed very close to Leighton Stone in Stratford. Mm-hmm. Um, nice local film. And we also showed a Bollywood blockbuster, Badrangi Bhaijan, Black Panther and the Kid in different locations um, so that people didn't have to travel, but all outdoors. Right. Um, we also had some uh, live shorts at the library, which was a very COVID safe uh, sim- in, in that same room that we saw in the last yeah. slide. But there was eight people allowed in there right. <laughs> at that time. So mm-hmm. very different. But we did have lots of um, online events. So over the three weeks, we spread it out to kind of help us deal with the new situation. We had 31 events. 22 digital events that included watch parties and talks and things like that. Um, nine live screenings, which I just spoke about. Mm-hmm. And of and we had 39 screenings of 70 individual films. And what was really interesting about this year was that seven, uh, of those 70 films, 32 were actually made in the borough or produced in the area. So it was very local kind of content. But then we also had short films from like Taiwan and Sao Paulo and things being shown online so mm-hmm. really kind of it was a very interesting um year for us obviously as it was for everybody and we all learned an immense amount about diy online screening um but yeah so that's kind of where we're at i think what is really important to kind of i think go get across is that we um are a big organization working with lots of small organizations and 
yeah. absolutely our kind of guiding principle is that we are so aware of how badly that can go. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we are, um, our role is to fundamentally to support the partner's practice, whether that's in film exhibition, filmmaking, or educate film education. Mm-hmm. And we are kind of, you know, Gally will tell you that I treat the Barbican Cinema team exactly the same as a producing partner from Wealth and Forest. It's like mm-hmm. everyone comes together to make the project together. And it's really interesting, I think, from Gally's perspective, how they kind of incorporate a project like this, which is so different to what they normally kind of work on within the Barbican Cinema context. So okay. thanks for the slides. I'll hand over to Gally. Thank you, Vilna. Okay, Gally. Uh, yeah, and we've been treated very well, so I can uh, reassure you of that. <laughs> um, I think there are, there are a few points that uh, Vilna alluded to, which I would like to kind of elaborate on. Um, first is that kind of staying away from any top-down approach. So we're talking about a locality that actually is not that close to the Barbican. Uh, we have a, an objective to uh, invest in, and develop film cultures in East London, but this is not an audience that we see immediately flocking into the building. So the whole notion of uh, audience development is being seen in a slightly different way. We're absolutely thinking about developing audience uh, for independent film, championing different film cultures, developing the kind of communal viewing experience, thinking about different ways of distribution, filmmaking, and uh, film exhibition. And in all of that, we as Barbican Cinema are there to facilitate, are there to facilitate what is on the ground. And in order to know what's on the ground, as Vilna uh, described, there's a lot of field work to be done. So you can't just come out of the blue. Uh, we're talking about time scales that are very different, we're talking about long time of investing in developing those relationships, and also seeing the results and the outcome of, of that project as something that is happening over time and is changing over time. Mm-hmm. At no point we're thinking they're going to be like we're changing the, the, the world around in the course of one edition. We're talking about an investment and a commitment that is there over years. I go back to audience development. Of course, as Barbican Cinema, I would love to see people from uh, Barra, um, the Bar of uh, Waltham Forest coming to our events. There's no doubt about that. It's not even that difficult. But the first and foremost is our joint investment and interest in facilitating, developing, and nurturing that uh, film enthusiast in the communities that are there. So for example, in the first edition of the festival, we very much kind of responded to what the different partners already programmed and reflected what is what we see as the Barbican program that can best fit and be integrate into that edition. So at that time we had a um, big season of anime, we brought Paprika there. We were looking at uh, Varda was just, you know, has just died. We brought yeah. the Gleaners and I with a particular kind of interest that are depicted in the film. Uh, we had an outdoor screening of the Isle of Dogs. Uh, we brought Laura Poitras and um, Linda Good, uh, Byron, uh, um, flag wars that is talking about uh, regeneration of neighborhoods and the tensions between in that film uh, gay and, and black communities. But the topics were very, very relevant to the local communities of Leighton Stone. And in that, we were actually just supplementing the Barbican program with whatever was already on the ground. In the same vein, we brought the Family Film Club uh, program to young audiences in Leytonstone and our young programmers uh, programmed with local programmers, by the way, uh, yeah. films for uh, young people. So all of that is just creating a picture that we believe is a kind of model that can be adopted by others. And this is why it was so important for us to bring it here today mm-hmm. to look at the possibility of relationship between institutions, organizations, with their expertise, with their resources, and local communities that are also not necessarily on their doorstep. Okay. And uh, I mean, I suppose the question, you know, in the context of this discussion is, what do you think the legacy will be of the project? I mean, it's, it's obviously not at an end, it has a long way to go. But what, you know, what's your overall objective 
in terms of film and light and stone, but also the 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 way that the barber can kind of it can engage with the community. Either either of you can answer this. So I go yeah. go in and we can. Okay. I, I think. Well, no fire step. So Vilna speaking. Um, okay. For the captions, um, I I think I mean I have a like you know dreamland existence in terms of maybe this will eventually um, end in a physical space that can be that, that can be populated by community programmers and attended by audiences that are local to that space, which is not crazy if you think about the amount of people that um, are engaging with this project and 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 the filmmakers and, and exhibitors that are like operating within the area um i think that what's really interesting about the, the the festival right now is that there's this very strong link between exhibitors and filmmakers um which allows them to work very cleanly online without the complications of a of a larger distributor which i think is a very interesting um uh thing to to foster and to explore um does it and, give them, sorry it's just a huge, huge button in here is this um does it give them more freedom do you think I, th I mean just just using last year this year as an example it was very difficult for us to be quickly and responsive um as larger distributors was were figuring out how they would license things online yeah. whereas our exhibitors were like i've got really great relationships with filmmakers straight up. I can ask them, we can pay them directly and we can put them through OBS onto YouTube live, like a very easy kind of pipeline to get it in front of audiences. Um, yeah. So I think that, that, that those things are very interesting to develop. Um, and I, Gally, in terms of Barbican, what do you think? I want to talk more uh, for a minute about the principles. You know, you were asking about legacies. Let's talk about kind of dreams. Um, Vilna was mentioning, you know, the 20 cinemas that were on Leytonstone High Road a while ago. So we'll do with like four, okay? Yay! <laughs> <laughs> Basically, what I'm saying is that, you know, there's something invaluable and we all know that we didn't need that lockdown to know that. But, you know, we got it. How much we all and not just us as uh, film professionals and film enthusiasts, you know, how much the public need those spaces to congregate, to come together, to enjoy art, to enjoy entertainment, to be challenged by the ideas, the world, the stories that we see on film. Mm -hmm. This is the first objective. How do we do that in a way like uh, Vilna is saying that is not just controlled by the big players? And we all know how venues like us are also, you know, now like in the hands of uh, huge distribution companies that don't necessarily have independent uh, exhibition you know, at their far forefront. Yeah. So when you see the local communities, the, the Again, it's not us feeding them what they want. It's them telling us what they want and what they need and the initiatives that are already there. So what I want to see is people being able to tell their stories on film in a way that is accessible to them. To, so access to the making, access to the distribution, and access to the exhibition. Mm -hmm. And then I think everybody benefits. And this is the, the established institutions, the venues like, like the Barbican, and of course, the film clubs, and I'm sure that Rob will contribute in a minute, those those places that, uh, you know, exist in, in the heart of communities uh, mm -hmm. the world over, not just uh, across the UK. That's great. Well, that, that's a, a good point to bring uh, Rob in. Rob, you've been very patient there. Uh, is, yeah. that, is, that, is that just water in your glass, can I ask? Since you're it is, yeah. Okay. It is, unfortunately. Can't hear it yet, I suppose. Um, uh, well, Rob, I mean... It's very interesting to hear from um, the Barbican and Leinster Loves Film about, you know, how a large scale organisation like that. Um, maybe you could tell us a bit, uh, and you know, and how a project like that develops. Maybe you could talk a bit about how Newcastle Community Cinema started and and has developed down the years in Newcastle. Actually, first, sorry, maybe you should maybe tell us a little bit about Newcastle for those um, uh, those who have maybe have never had the pleasure of uh, of um, one of the most beautiful places in Ireland. It is, um, and we don't have quite a rich her uh, film heritage as Leighton Slow, uh, in fact, quite the opposite. Uh, back in the 90s, we had a, a cinema running at a local um, council um, 
uh, Newcastle Centre, and it was voted the worst cinema in the world by the Daily Mirror. <laughs> uh, really? So yeah, you weren't allowed food or anything inside, so it was a pretty drab affair. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, we don't. I mean, the closest thing we have in Newcastle here, I suppose, is uh, the location for Game of Thrones. Yeah. But yeah, so we're we're a seaside town, about uh, thirty miles from Belfast, approximately eight to ten thousand people. Um, but yeah, uh, you know, and in the summer we could have anything from sixty to a hundred thousand visitors. So everything's tourist centric. Everything is based around tourists and the locals don't really in fact they just like complain a lot that there's nothing for them to do um so yeah i mean you know in fact we don't even operate in the summer we rent our our venue out in the summer for to a local arts group mm-hmm. um so you know we're very community centric everything's about the locals mm-hmm. look after them that way um yeah so um you, back in 2009 we um I, I just come back from traveling around the world. Um, I've been living in London, I've been living in Manchester and then Belfast. So, you know, I, I was sort of, um, you know, I opened my eyes living in the city to sort of a lot, a lot more of the arts and culture scene mm-hmm. and predominantly uh, cinemas um, and independent cinemas. So, um, you know, I, was going, I remember being in Brisbane in Australia and going to my first outdoor cinema and just blowing me away mm-hmm. so i suppose when i come back here to newcastle and sort of settling down um a few of few, just got a few people together like-minded people um with an aim of starting a community cinema mm-hmm. um you know where the closest cinema we have is in about Bel- uh, closest independent cinema is a qft in belfast we yeah. have a multiplex in Downpatrick, which is about 12 15 miles away half an hour drive isn't it what's that about yeah. half an hour's drive or so yeah. yeah so um so yeah so we just we just got together done a bit of research um try to find out as much information as we could and, and basically blagged it to a certain extent um <laughs> uh, the funny thing is a lot of a lot of a lot of the uh the councils and stuff didn't really know much about it themselves so Mm-hmm. We we're asking people for cinema licenses and all this sort of stuff, and they were like, "What? You need a license to go <laughs> cinema?" And we we we, we were nearly telling them what mm-hmm. why it worked in the end. So yeah, so um, so back in two thousand nine, we we screened our first film uh, in a local uh, community hall run by the local Glee singers, and uh, so we opened our doors up to one hundred and eighty people for a free screening of The Shining. Wow. On Halloween, so uh, yeah, and then we just developed it from there. So we just really started by showing one or two films a month, mm-hmm. um, and then I don't really know what happened, but we sort of went on a bit of a tangent, and we started creating like immersive cinema experiences. Mm-hmm. Um, so just uh, bolting on um, e- extra activity, making more value for money rather than just going to see a movie. Mm-hmm. So the first one that I can really sort of think of that was significant was, you know, we showed the Big Lebowski. So uh, you know, we built a, like a bar shack and s- served white Russians, and then uh, and sort of fancy dress, and then we built a, a bowling alley right up the middle of the cinema. Oh. So as you do, um, <laughs> all on a budget. We had we had no money, so it was just a, 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 you know bringing in the community and getting people to help us and joiners and anybody who could contribute really and it made for a really eventful night and then from there we just started developing this idea of sort of uh what we called it event cinema at the time but that sort of has a different um yeah um, yeah connotation there so um yeah so uh, other things we done at the time was we showed uh tim burton's alice in wonderland um yeah and we had a tea party and lots of kids activities and uh, workshops mm-hmm. and again I think we had about 120 kids all packed in with uh, all dressed up and having a big giant tea party before the movie so um, yeah so what- that's what sort of we developed that was the sort of route we went to have this sort of having fun with it and we sort of went down the route of how can we outdo our last event 
and get a bit carried away like kids ourselves, I suppose. <laughs> well, the one I, I remember, the one I noticed uh, first, or the uh, first time I heard about you was the Ghostbusters thing where you got an old um, a hearse. Yeah. Put it up as an ambulance and then drove through the town. Yeah, so when we started the cinema, I sort of had this thing in my head, uh, sort of targets that I wanted to achieve, and uh, one of them was a drive-in movie. Mm -hmm. So we'd done a big drive-in event for 100 cars, um, and sort of as a promotional tool, it was a Halloween. So um, in the town, there is like an annual sort of Halloween parade uh, before a fireworks display on, the, on Halloween night. So we decided to... Um, we managed to get hold of an old hearse and we totally resprayed it and totally changed it into uh, Ecto-1 and then proceeded to, to uh, parade it in front of the whole town. And we'd done various visits to it, all dressed up, went to the schools and engaged with the community and to sort of promote the whole event. And mm -hmm. yeah, it worked, it sold out in no time. So it was great fun. Yeah. Um, and then I suppose, um uh, the venue was the next big step really was getting getting hold of your own venue and that's been quite a change for you it has yeah um so we ran out of the uh, glees hall doing screenings once twice a month mm. and like we would back then we would it's save money we'd do two screenings in one day so we wouldn't mm. have to pay so much for room hire so we were doing a kids kids um, event in the in the morning or you know, uh, early afternoon, and that night we would uh, we would show. Um, I was going to say an adults film, but that sounds wrong. Um, <laughs> um, and then what would we find, which is really interesting, is so people would bring their kids to the movie, and then the, the parents would come back that night um, and watch another film. So, so yeah, but our hands were tied. I mean, we had we would we were um, we were uh, what's the word jostling with other users in the hall, so we couldn't quite you know there's all, we were coming up against walls for trying to book events around certain time periods. So uh, yeah, uh, what six years ago, then an opportunity came along to develop um, and refurbish our own venue. So as you say, that sort of turned the whole thing on its head because um, it, it it wasn't it, it wasn't just about running a cinema and running events. It became um, about running the venue and all the connotations that come with that, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I think, um, I mean, obviously from Film Hub and I, we, we know your work very well, but in terms of the, the development of a venue, but then also the development of a, of a yearly festival as well. So it has been a, uh, what's the word, um, a kind of a gradual um, development and growth. And do you think that that has always been uh, rooted in what the community kind of wanted and, and what Newcastle as a, and, the, and the hinterland needed, I suppose? Well, it, it's hard to say because um, it's sort of like chicken and egg where I think well, there, there wasn't really an art scene or culture scene in Newcastle as a whole. Mm -hmm. But then well, when we started, there seemed to be like a big flourish. Um, so there was an arts festival popped up um, and you know, it was obviously a crossover there. We were working with them and developing things around that. Um, so yeah, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, we, we I think we did, we started it um, to appease ourselves because mm -hmm. there, there was lack of cinema. Uh, we'd done a bit of research at the start, but we didn't. We obviously we didn't know it was going to work. But then, as as, uh, as time developed, I mean, we called ourselves Newcastle Community Cinema. And we didn't really know what that was at the time, I suppose. Mm -hmm. I don't really know why we call it community cinema. It was for the community, but we didn't know how we were going to engage with the community. Yeah. I suppose that came along after. Mm -hmm. And we integrated ourselves with similar um, groups and we found ourselves fundraising um, and just reaching out, and, you know, the schools, um, even uh, local charities. Mm -hmm. Um, we were delivering film to people who were socially isolated um, yeah. in care homes and stuff, you know. So it sort of came a, a, a growth in itself. It was really organic. Mm -hmm. You know, we didn't set out to go in a certain direction, but over time, the community, I suppose, engaged with us and we engaged with the community. Yeah, and I, and I suppose that that is similar in terms of, uh, I noticed that Gally has maybe dropped out. Yeah, I, I hope. 
she finds her way back in. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll 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 crack on and, and and see if she she comes back. It may it may just be an internet problem at her end or our end. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's quite interesting in terms of, um, uh, Robert, it might be useful just in, in terms of how you've responded around COVID uh, and um, what the, I mean, obviously the impact is we haven't been able to open and, and, and screenings haven't happened, but but as a community cinema and someone with such roots in the community, you know, what um, what have NCC kind of done in the, in the interim? It's really hard because it has been very stop start. Yeah. Um, for people outside of Northern Ireland, um, the local executive have been very, how could you say? <laughs> um, um, they haven't really been yeah, cool. very last minute. So anytime we try to program something or get going, then we're hit with something else or some other restrictions. Yeah. So we've sort of used this time to sort of reassess our whole setup. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, we spent all last week a plan to the arts council yeah. and about a, a sort of new direction that we need to go in sort of again utilizing our venue mm-hmm. um, and expanding the venues to the wider community and we we'll nearly create a, a, an art center rather mm-hmm. than just a cinema mm-hmm. so that's the sort of route we're going down to expand and diversify yeah um i mean we we, we run a, a short film program mm-hmm. uh, called eat my shorts so it's two, two minute short films mm-hmm. Um, which just can uh, sorry, this is concluding this Sunday. So we've uh, drawn up a short list of winners and there's various prizes. So it's been really good and really interesting. Um, and, and something that gets people to engage, I suppose, as yeah. well. Yeah. I mean, we, we looked at, we looked at, um, doing stuff online and stuff, but again, we're all volunteers. Um, you know, we all have jobs and families and it's very hard to, um, you know, there's a lot of hard work. Yeah, going from scratch, um, just to try and develop something. We didn't really know it was going to work, mm. so we've sort of just been, yeah. I mean, we put most of our uh, eggs into the EMS Eat My Shorts basket, I suppose. Mm. The EMS, the Eat My Shorts basket, sounds um, like something that you know. The, there's certainly a legacy there, Rob. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> title. Um, well, I mean, you've you've worked with um, local filmmakers, and I mean, it, the local kind of um, production element and local people making film is a really important part of linking things to the community, isn't it? Have you found that? Absolutely, and I think you know it's it's interesting to kind of see how where we can push that into you know, next year, you know, we've, we've always wanted to kind of create something where people have the opportunity to be inspired to make film. Mm -hmm. Um, if, even if they've never thought about that before, I mean, in our first year, we had workshops, smartphone filmmaking workshops, which is, you know, a a big kind of thing to do now. Um, and we continued to build on that workshop model Mm -hmm. this year. Um, but we also had workshops in 2019 where, um, aimed at families and young people, but where people can, could, um, you know, touch and use um, eight millimeter, 16 millimeter film and project it. And there was a real old projector. And mm-hmm. they, so they made their own little piece of film using um, plants and, you know, it was a, it just a very tactile kind of, they stuck bits of plants to the film and then projected that. And it was this very, very beautiful kind of workshop. Um, but so that, so we we try to kind of give people experiences of all different kinds of film, smart digital analog to kind of try and inspire that. But to kind of pull back to your question, like this is, this year we actually worked with Stowe Film Lounge and Marcus Shepherd, who's a big part of that um, collective. So they they've been exhibiting films in uh, Walthamstow specifically, but in the area for about almost ten years. Hi, Gally. Hello again, Gally. Um, but Marcus is a filmmaker, and he made a, a film about to exhibit at the festival about um, Leighton Stone High Road. So I think that that, that appetite, um, and because we've got such a s- close link between film exhibition, film exhibitors, and filmmakers, that that short, um, you know, link is 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 really is something really exciting, you know. Yeah. For, and, uh, and from a programming perspective, Gally, you know, local filmmakers um, having the chance and the opportunity to engage with an organisation like the Barbican must be quite useful for you to find out what's going on out there. 
Absolutely. But also, you know, this is part of an ongoing effort to kind of open up what we call the decision making process. So uh, open up programming to other voices. Um, This is always uh, something that we're trying to do in the venue through various initiatives like the Emerging Curators one, like the Young Programmers one. And of course, with uh, the local communities, this is really something that we see as, as um, you know, our role is to facilitate that. We know how hard it is to get in and yeah. we know what contribution those uh, new voices, different voices are bringing mm-hmm. uh, uh, into into the, um, the ecosystem of mm-hmm. film exhibition. Yeah, so, I mean, so for a lot of communities, it isn't just about bringing in the best of film from around the world, although that is obviously a huge part of what what happens. It's also reflecting what's happening on their streets. Absolutely. And, you know, things have, you know, it would be much more meaningful to be shown there, you know, and and this is why we we play with different venues, with different setups and with different audiences. Mm -hmm. And, and, And this is exactly the kind of art of finding the suitability and this place for everything. I mean, it's it's interesting, Rob. You know, your venue in um, in Newcastle is right on the high street, um, and so you know, I mean, and obviously, you know, uh, you're all involved in kind of the life of the of the town and things. What what sort of role does having a venue, having a place on the on the high street, mean for the other other businesses and the, you know the, the the kind of the the commercial and economic life of the town? Do you, have you an idea of what the impact is? Not necessarily figures, but you know, a sense of the of the impact. Uh, it's it's hard to tell. I mean, Newcastle is a busy town. Um, mm-hmm. um, it's you know, sometimes it's quite scary how busy it is, especially when there's supposed to be lockdowns on. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, we have a good we have a good tie with the um, with the business community. Mm-hmm. You know, um, they sponsor us, and um, we try and look after them as best we can. And um, I mean, it's great because our venue's huge. It's so big that it, you know, uh, uh, get into sort of post-COVID stuff, or even in within COVID, if we're allowed to open up again, um, it can be various events held with a good audience because it's so big, and you can still get a good number of people in socially distance. Two hundred and fifty people you can get in there. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. yeah. So we think you, we could probably run events for maybe 80, 100 people. Um, we've sort of done some test stuff mm. just with uh, an online ticketing system where you can uh, book uh, socially distance people when you book a ticket. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the, the business is, um, I suppose, I don't really know what I'm trying to say. Mm. Um, I mean, yeah, having 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 the cinema on the high street is is brilliant, and you know, uh, it's so many people are walking by it every day, and people you use our we have big advertising boards at the front, and mm. so it's good that way. So there's also that, that answers your question. So no, I think it does. I mean, I think it's that it's that presence on the high street that you know it's it's interesting just to, you know hearing from Gally about the idea of having four cinemas if we could get to four cinemas I'm, I'm yeah. thinking you know don't don't uh, you know I'm, uh, maybe I, I took the wrong number I should be more ambitious even no well we, don't worry we won't come back to you in 10 years and ask why it hasn't happened yet Gally don't worry there's only one that would be fine yeah but, it, but we are now facing a world where you know cineplexes and multiplexes and the kind of role of the large scale kind of shopping shopping mall kind of cinema development maybe has had its day as a business model and you know whether or not actually the the kind of development of independent cinemas and the the kind of community based independent cinema is maybe the the kind of you know with lower overheads and with you know th- those kind of elements are are going to have more of an impact do you feel that in maybe in Leytonstone it's fertile ground for that kind of thing it's really interesting because because we're co-fu- co-funded and commissioned by the council like that they, they are so focused on high street re- revitalization and ha- what how we can contribute to that and you know thriving high streets and things like that and it is it is quite challenging because y- you are programming a free event and it's about you know trying to draw the links between you know someone who's coming to a free event might might may not go and spend lots of money on the high street you know that that's there's a there's a little bit of a disconnect there but if you 
if you continue to nurture the audience, to nurture people, to stay in the area, to under, you know, to feel valued that they have these events that they can um, come to, contribute to, be part of, then you know, obviously that's going to have an immense effect on a high street and on, on, and on a location. And then eventually, yes, if you can have an amazing community space, mm. that 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 there has to be benefits <laughs> you know it, and we've gone so far down one road like anything back it has to just get better if you do if if you are on this kind of community based locality based track like if you can just keep that going it will contribute to a, a nicer place to live i think that's the difference between um the multiplexes is there's, there's definitely a social side to our cinema Mm. Yeah. Um, so you know, it's not it's not just about going to the cinema. There is mm. that sort of added. Um, it's it's not really tangible, but you know, there's something there. It's a difference there somewhere mm. where people like coming to our cinema as a social aspect rather than mm. just going to see the local or the next blockbuster. You know. Yeah, I, I would I would argue, Rob, that that is exactly part of what we talk about. You know, all of us as the collective experience. That yeah. you know, part of it is meeting other people. It's going through the similar experiences with other people. It's the talking before, the talking after, and also look around us. Who is jumping in there to reopen? It's the independent cinemas that hold it at the moment, and they're doing an amazing job. But they can't do that job without, you know, being sustainable. And being sustainable is through, you know, the certain subsidies, but also through the pipeline that has to provide, you know, content. And and that there must be something different now in the ecosystem that is being developed that can cherish that. Everybody realize the importance of that, and yeah. we must make sure that there are the models and the support to continue. That. That. because you know i think that there is such a wide agreement about the importance of that i'm talking i, I live in southeast london there is a pet complex which is actually a multiplex it's a it's a small in the, you know not a multiplex but of yeah. course a, a multi-screen uh, a amazing community affordable yeah. cinema that yeah. had to shut down because they have no content to show for their regular audiences you know this is actually outrageous in my view because this place is a core of the local community yeah yeah uh yeah i mean i think that uh, it's interesting rob mentioned the sort of the arts council in northern Ireland. they're managing the the, the covid relief thing which we're, we're six months behind everyone else but say no more and um the you know talking to some of the the kind of chains here and the smaller kind of uh, smaller operators you know talking about actually you know, when they talk about what they do with the community and the kind of engagement they have with the community, they, they, they do, they are community spaces, you know. I mean, they're not massive multiplexes, but they are they are having something there. And I think it's making maybe them think about how they express that and how they program and how they look at, you know, how that reflects and things like that. So I think, I mean, I think there is there is a change. I think it's a, it's a case of, you know, keeping conversations like, like this going. Uh, we have a question in the chat from Moran, I think it is. Uh, let me see, which is, why do we seem to value visitors from afar more than those closer to home? Is that maybe, maybe a, I, I, I don't know, Rob, maybe that's a question for you. Sorry, can you rephrase the question, sir? Uh, so why do we value visitors? Why do we, why do we, why do we make so much um, song and dance about tourists as opposed to those closer from home, I think is the question. Well, I think that was a point I made. I mean, yeah. we, cl we, we closed during the summer and the summer mm -hmm. season, the busy site season where you've got uh, upward of 60 to 100,000 visitors. So that's not our bread and butter. We, you know, we are for the community. Um, we program for the community with, in mind and we engage with our community. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, no, that, that, yeah. I mean, I think that's, I think it's maybe a, a wider question about why mm -hmm. tourism is so key um, to government policy and to large-scale investment and things like that, and actually services for the community are less so, um, maybe. But I think it's really good to also look at it not as either or. You yeah. know, I would hate to think that we only look inward. I think it's really important uh, to think, you know, in a wide way, in a diverse international way, mm -hmm. while we're absolutely connected to the communities in which we operate. And I don't think that the two necessarily are exclusive. Oh, good point, yeah. Yeah, and local can be international, um, and, and especially somewhere like London, obviously. But you know, uh, even in the last twenty years, the developments 
uh, in Northern Ireland, which is, you know, has really been a very kind of homogenous monoculture society for a long time. The changes in the last 20, 20 years are very interesting. And I think that um, the community cinemas here have engaged with that. You know, I'm thinking of um, Rob, some of the things that have happened down at Dungannon, Dungannon Film Club down there, really engaged with a lot of the kind of um, the immigrant community that came in over the last 20 years and, and, and you know, regarded them as part of their community, I think is, is my yeah. point. I think it's a, that's almost a state of mind, but there is maybe that worry that you become inward looking and it becomes parochial, you know. A um, couple more questions here. Question to Rob. Sometimes the most, this is from Sylvia Harvey, sometimes the most important thing that makes things work is the most obvious thing. You said all have jobs and families, but isn't this factor probably what made it work in Newcastle? You're not outsiders. Quite sure what that means. Um, uh, I think that means basically that because you have on the ground knowledge um, that you were able to make it, make, it, make it work in a small place. I mean, I suppose, is that, do you all have roots in Newcastle or? Do you have what, sorry? Do all the board have roots in Newcastle? Uh, yeah, I mean, it kind of helps that uh, I own a pub, so yeah. sort of, I know everyone. <laughs> most important person in the town then. <laughs> yeah, um, I know everyone, yeah, well, I know most people, and uh, part and parcel of being in a pub is everyone likes you telling you um, everything about their life, so you sort of get a good understanding of what people like and what people don't like. Yeah, so, true. Um, so yeah, yeah. I mean, it definitely helps, I suppose. Um, I, I I've done, I've worked with people outside of um, outside of my town, I suppose, with other community cinemas, and it's very hard to grasp um, mm. what what the locality want and what they need, I suppose. Yeah. Um, somebody's just saying it's a great pub as well there on the chat room. So that's it. <laughs> your, your trip advisor sorted there. Um, so, I mean, finally, one of the, the last things I wanted to, to just before we wrap up is um, Wilma and Galley. So, sort of how, how long is the project going to run for? And sort of, you know, does it have a time scale or will it just, as long as it keeps funded, you'll keep going? Yeah, um, <laughs> basically. Um, I think what is so fantastic like my my aim and i think the project like from the barbican's perspective is as while the going's good keep yeah. going and put as much kind of effort into creating just like or opportunities for people to um create sustainable practice for themselves mm -hmm. i think that the, the this idea of the event or the project being um seeding things like seeding film clubs seeding um even filmmakers people like so that so that carries on regardless of of um you know Leighton stone loves film which happens around september every year but that, mm -hmm. so that as long as we can keep doing that and then having this celebration event that pulls everything together um the more years we can do it the stronger those things happen and you know all our partners actually like they they have you know fantastic careers and organizations that um, operate and do lots of different things. You know, they're not dependent on Leighton Stone Loves Film. Mm -hmm. Like they, they are off doing amazing programs and and running their own film festivals. And yeah. so, you know, Leighton Stone Loves Film is a part of their ecology, but it's not the thing that's keeping them going. Which I think is quite important when you're working with subsidied in on subsidied projects. Is is mm -hmm. when you become the thing that people. It, it, that's dangerous because we all know how how anything can change just like that but if you can create kind of if you can be part of something then if one thing drops out something you know it won't completely collapse everything so, yeah so it's it, yeah. It, it has a level of interdependency but you know but but also can stand on its own two feet to certain exactly extent. And it's very flexible. It's very agile, as as we described, even in the course of the few years that we're working there, we mm. adapt and adjust, and you know, respond in the way that is needed. And then That's why it's you know, Leighton Stone loves film, and not Leighton Stone Film Festival, because yeah. that kind of puts you into that thing of having to deliver a festival. So in a way, it's about developing film culture, or at, at the sort of top of the top end of it. And uh, I mean, Rob, you said you, you're reassessing. Um, you know, where where Newcastle goes from here. I mean, do you, do you have any objectives at the moment? Um, you know, uh, not really, because I think we're sort of we're, we're um, sort of working away in the background of what 
what what what way to go forward? Um, I mean, I think it's another point that probably wasn't picked up is um, how creative the industry can be as well. Mm. Um, going forward, I think that everyone will find a way um, to adapt and evolve. Um, so yeah, we're, we're just at a bit of a crossroads at the minute um, into what direction to go. Um, mm. I mean, I think we, we are going to expand the use of our venue and create more of an arts center um, with the, with Newcastle, Newcastle Community Cinema within that. Right, yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, that, that will have, I suppose that will have maybe repercussions for how you run it and, and control and, and, and those kind of things. You'll have to think about that, I suppose. Yeah, I mean, from the cinema perspective, um, we've 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 lost our way to a certain extent because we're we're concentrating on running the venue so much. Yeah, we might lose a bit at the start, but we you know we hopefully we'll come back and mm. find our sort of our um, what's the word? Just our sort of mojo. mojo is the word I was looking for. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that that you know, um, obviously we we work with a lot of community cinemas and and Cinema for All would talk about this as well. It is you know when you're a volunteer board momentum and 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 keeping your morale up and and also knowing when to reassess and take breaks i mean i think that that you know that's maybe for the for people for large scale projects like Leighton Stone loves film it's like if somebody needs to step back for a bit it's okay it doesn't mean that the whole thing is gone you know yeah yeah all right well look um thank you very much uh, we've had um yeah some nice stuff there um and uh it's going here yeah this is quite a conversation so i think the uh, the conversation will continue in the chat room obviously uh, i was trying to catch up there but um uh, thank you gally thank you Wilma. thank you and thank so you very much, much rob um been tremendous and um i'll say goodbye to you all and um maybe see you during the conference again and uh, meet up with you in person one of these days absolutely I we're all coming to northern up. ireland by the way yeah, you got to, we'll, we'll bring this way up to Newcastle one of these times. Oh, that would be amazing. You're all very welcome. Very much so. Thank you. I'm in the sea and drinking in the pub. Yeah, soon. All right. Thanks all. Everyone. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, uh, yes, somebody in the chat room has just said to the pub. Um, and it's good to see that the spirit of this way up has continued virtually as well as everything else. So coming up, uh, we're going to have a break for lunch. Uh, 20 minutes um, uh, to eat a sandwich or maybe some Bombay mix. Um, and then there will be uh, 13.55, which is um, five to two in old money. Um, there will be show and shares. And um, today, we're, uh, during this period, we're going to hear from uh, London Film Festival. And we're also going to hear from Light Up Leith. So they'll be on at five to two. Um, and then after that, coming up is Nicola Kettlewood, um, uh, manager of Film Hub Scotland, and she's going to be taking you through the afternoon. And um, uh, the next session after that will be introduction to diversifying British film culture uh, from quarter past two to, uh, I think, yes, ten past, five, ten past three. So uh, have a break and we'll uh, see you soon. Thanks very much, everyone. Bye bye. <laughs>